In today's class, I want to show you how not to run an experiment. In the previous class, I showed you the results from a very simple experiment that was run correctly. We considered our outcome to be the profit we made in the store. And there were two factors. The first was the amount of light in the store, and the second was the price of the product we're selling. The outcome was the profit we could make. You'll recall from those experiments we had two continuous factors. The first was the amount of light, either at 50% or 75% on the dimmer. The second factor was the price of the product, either $7.79 or $8.49. Here's how not to run the experiments. Many people will only run three experiments. They consider the first experiment here in the bottom left corner to be their starting point. This is the experiment with low lights and low prices. Then they figure they need to move across and only increase the light and run that second experiment over here. Then they go back to the starting point and move up from that and do a third experiment over here, increasing only the price. Many people assume this is the correct way to do experiments because every time you're only changing one thing. You've been taught that in school and in university. Only change one thing at a time. If you did these three experiments, what you notice is that you only get one estimate of the effect of lighting and only one estimate of the effect of changing price. Recall in the previous class, I said you should do four experiments. With just that one extra experiment up here in the top right hand side, we can now estimate the effects twice. We have two estimates of lighting changes and we have two estimates of price changes. So by adding that one extra experiment, what we've essentially done is doubled the amount of information we've achieved. In many cases, this is well worth the extra work of doing that extra experiment. Now next week, I'm going to show you another reason why that fourth experiment is so crucial. So there's lots to look forward to in this course. Finally, we'd like to challenge you to think about your own experiments for the duration of this course. Do you have an objective in mind already? What about the factors that will influence the outcome from your experiments? Maybe they are related to water treatments or energy use in your home. Or it might be a recipe that you want to fine-tune. It might be experiments that you'd like to run at work. Or experiments that will influence the people around you, your neighbors and your community. Please film a short video and upload it to YouTube at this link. Share it on the course forums and show people around you what you're working on. Myself and others would like to comment on your work and give you some feedback. We hope to see you in future modules.